Polarization by selective absorption. A beam of unpolarized light of intensity I0 passes through a series of ideal polarizers parallel to each other as shown in the figure below. Polarizer 1, polarizer 2, polarizer 3. The first polarizer 1 has a vertical fixed transmission axis. The second polarizer rotates with a uniform angular speed omega as shown. The angle between the transmission axis of the first and second polarizers is initially 0 degrees. So this angle is increasing in time. The transmission axis of the third polarizer is perpendicular to that of the first polarizer. Okay, so that's the transmission axis. Alright, uh, the polarizers are equidistant from each other. Distance D, part A, calculate the intensity at point A, B at point B, C at point C, D, maximum intensity at point C, part E, remove the rotating polarizer, what is the intensity at point C, and after the removal of this polarizer, we bring them closer, so 2D becomes D, how does this intensity at point C will change? How does it change? Okay, so unpolarized light going through an ideal polarizer with a fixed vertical transmission axis Will, we will have all possible angles between the uh, electric field and the transmission axis. Remember, uh, when light goes through a polarizer, we take the projection of the electric field onto the transmission axis. And since the intensity is proportional to amplitude of the electric field squared, we have cosine squared theta. That's Malus law. So, for an unpolarized light, all angles are possible with equal probability. So we take the average value of cosine square theta, which is one half. So the answer is I0 divided by 2. So the intensity at point A should be I0 divided by 2. <clears throat> so let's show that the average value of cosine square theta is equal to one half. That is one over the period, one over two pi, integral over one period, zero to two pi, cosine square theta d theta. And this is one over two pi, integral zero to two pi, Cosine square theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Cosine theta is 2 cosine square theta minus 1 d theta. This integral gives me 1 over 2 pi. Integral of 1 over 2 d theta over 2 is theta over 2. And integral of cosine gives me... Uh, 1 over 2 cosine 2 theta becomes 1 over 4 sine 2 theta. This will be evaluated between 0 and 2 pi. At 0 and 2 pi, sine 2 theta is 0. So here we obtain 2 pi over 2 times 2 pi, which is 1 over 2. So average value of the angle is 1 over 2. And here I'm using a Malice law. All right, part B, the second polarizer has an angle theta uh, with respect to the first polarizer transmission axis that varies in time as omega t. So using Malus law once again, the intensity at point B is intensity at point A cosine square omega t because omega t is the angle with respect to the transmission axis of the first polarizer. So this gives me intensity at point B is I0 over 2 cosine square omega t. Uh, part C. Now intensity at point C 
that is once again applying the Mellis law intensity at point A, the angle is 90 degrees for the third polarizer, omega t for the second polarizer, so 90 minus omega t, that is IB sine square omega t, and IB was I0 over 2 cosine square omega t multiplied with sine square omega t. Now, if I multiply this with 4 over 4, I will obtain intensity at point C to be I0 divided by 8 because 2 sine omega cosine 2 sine omega t cosine omega t is sine 2 omega t. This will become sine square 2 omega t. So intensity at point C is I0 over 8 sine square 2 omega t with a maximum value because sine square varies between 0 and 1 sine square 2 omega t is between 0 and 1 the intensity at point c has a maximum value of i0 over 8 all right and part e if I remove the rotating polarizer, then I simply have intensity at point C equals intensity at point A cosine square relative angle between the two transmission axes 90 minus 0 cosine 90 is 0. So this will give me intensity at point C equals 0 in that case. And in part F, I bring them closer but the distance between the polarizers has no effect so no change intensity at point c will remain to be zero why because intensity is not a function of d in this case the, in, the intensity of the polarized light is not a function of the distance between the polarizers. Okay, so here we have a problem about polarization by selective absorption. A, an unpolarized light going through a polarizer loses half of its intensity. Using Malice law and considering the electric field can oscillate in all possible directions here, we can have electric field oscillating up to the right, down, to the left, out of plane, in plane, etc. So all directions are possible with equal probability. Uh, then we have all angles possible. So we take the average over all angles. For each electric field component, we take its projection onto the transmission axis, vertical transmission axis. And for intensity, we have to take the square of the amplitude. So it becomes cosine square theta. So I0 average value of cosine square theta is I0 over 2, as we have shown using this definition of averaging. 1 over period, integral over 1 period of the periodic function. Okay, now uh, in part B, calculate the intensity at point B. Now this uh, second polarizer makes an angle omega t with respect to the first polarizer transmission axis. So Ia cosine square omega t minus 0 or Ia cosine square omega t. That's I0 over 2 cosine square omega t. That's the intensity at point B. At point C, now we have a 90 degree angle here and omega t angle here. 90 minus omega t is the relative angle. Uh, IB cosine square 90 minus omega t, that's sine square omega t. And uh, IB is I0 over 2 cosine square omega t multiplying with 4 over 4. We have 4 sine square cosine square that is sine square 2 omega t divided by 8. Uh, that's the answer. And that has a maximum value I0 over 8. 
If we remove the second polarizer, then we would have vertical and horizontal transmission axis, cosine square 90 is zero, intensity would be zero. If we bring them closer, that still remains to be zero because the intensity of the polarized light will not be a function of distance d.